Hey guys, Anthony here again. Uh, I thought I'd give you guys a little update video now that the car is back on the street again. So what I've been working on for the past few months is uh, basically all suspension work. Um, I upgraded to a set of VMAX coilovers. I don't know if I can be able to sneak this phone in here. Uh, but behind here is a set of VMAX, their classic line of uh, coilovers. They're adjustable ride height, non-adjustable dampening. Um, also flying me out of sway bars, front and rear, uh, all polyurethane bushings with grease fittings that I installed. I had to buy a set of NB control arms basically all around and have all the bearings pushed out and all the uh, bushings pressed out and everything like that. So actually you can see the uh, there's the front uh, sway bar from Fly Miata right down there and there's one in the rear to match. I might be able to sneak a shot under the car from the back here. Let me see. Yeah, there you go. So, as you can see, there's the rear uh, Fly Miata sway bar right there. That is their Canon subframe brace. Uh, the guy was missing the uh, little bracket there that goes above the exhaust. I bought this second hand, but it had never been installed. And I ordered one from Fly Miata. They said that it would take a little while to get one in stock. They have to order the bracket extra when they get another shipment of braces in, so I have to wait on that. But for now, I made one out of strip steel, and please don't mind my exhaust. It's going, hopefully, very shortly for a uh, nice Fly Miata unit. Uh, here are the polyurethane bushings. You can see those in the upper. There's the uh, upper outer, and then the lower. You can see where the grease fittings are on there. They also, I put dust caps on them to keep them uh, nice and clean. Uh, 949 Racing end links to go with the uh, sway bars. Those are actually, they're pricey, but they allow you to get a lot more uh, out of your sway bars and preload or pretension anything you want. And then of course the VMAX. Uh, I have these in the rear set to about five inches. I believe I have the fronts, the, this, um, the two lock nuts are actually almost at the very top of their uh, adjustment and in that just cleared where I could not rub the front fenders. So they recommend a nine and a half uh, ride height on the fronts. I actually ended up going higher than that. Uh, the car is aligned now. The, uh, I believe I put these in the last video, the Chaparral wheels. Uh, these are 15 by seven all around and the tires are also the same. They're uh, 20550 R15 Yokohama S drives. Uh, they all came from a company called R Speed. You can see the, uh, the rear R lip here. They make that. They also made the front piece. It goes all the way across. The front license plate is actually being held on by a garage store offset bracket and that actually bolts to one of the old tow hooks right in there and as you can see it's like a triangular piece on the back so you have pretty good coverage on it here's the front you can actually see uh something else i didn't mention is the brake upgrade that i did you get right in here those are dba slotted brakes from moss miata uh, along with their green stuff ebc pads you can just make out the pad right there now the car has its original uh, front suspension, basically. This side, uh, I think I put the NB lower control arm on the driver's side. The other side is all NA. They're the same on his jig, so I got those from parts group. Uh, the back is actually all NB now. Upper and lowers came from an NB, as well as the hubs. The brakes, on the other hand, are still 1.6 brakes with the uh, green stuff pads, and then of course the uh, slotted DBA rotors. Uh, so far the car handles fantastically. I was having a lot of issues with uh, basically bump steer on the driver's, uh, actually on the passenger side front. Turned out when I was taking all the control arms off that I could move the lower on this side basically by hand. So that was not good. And as you can see Mako did a fantastic job on this paint job. Uh, it took him about 13 weeks but it's uh, held up fantastic. I only have about 4,500 miles on the car so far. Uh, I just did a brake bleed on it. I cleaned up some of these hoses. These are from Carbon Miata. 
they're based out of Shanghai. Uh, the guys make excellent stuff over there. Hopefully I'll be able to get one of their ducktail spoilers for this car. Uh, it's a trunk with an integrated uh, ducktail on it. The Prestige powder coated um, intake and valve cover held up very nicely. I'm going to get a Track Dog Racing uh, cover to go right here. And if you notice that little compressor there and those little guys, well, that also came from Fly Miata. That is their Fium air horn. Uh, it's supposed to sound like an old Ferrari or Lamborghini or something like that. It's close enough. And finally, people can hear me coming, so that's good because this car is very small. Now, inside, I believe the interior was mostly done the last video I took. Uh, basically everything is stock 91 uh, special edition. This car was a black interior with a white exterior. Uh, these seat covers actually came from eBay for about 160, I got them for 140. Fantastic, just some hog rings and pliers. Uh, the carpets are basically all stock. The floor mats. My girlfriend actually bought these. I think they came from uh, Priority Mazda Parts. They used to be Rosenthal. The guy who left Rosenthal went to Priority Mazda, same state in Virginia, and uh, he can get you basically any stock part for a Miata. Moving on to the rest of the interior. The tuning shop, uh, leather with blue stitch. There we go. Uh, E-brake boot, e boot, yeah. e boot and the shift boot. The original owner of these ordered this so it would be raised up. That way when you're in third gear, it actually, you can see it a lot easier than the old ones. I have my old white ones laying somewhere, but um, anyway, they feel a lot nicer. Uh, that is from Rev Limiter little five-speed shift plate. There's actually a hole under here because the previous owner drilled through this to put some kind of button there. I'm not sure if it was for fog lights or a radio or some kind of alarm system. I'm not sure. And there's a little Pumba, the Sony head unit. Uh, this will be going to, um, away pretty soon because I'll be ordering this to go custom with what I'm about to show you in a second. Also from his company are the uh, retro hazard switches. I love these. My girlfriend got me these as well. And the Nardi steering wheel. This is the 330 millimeter. It came from Amazon. It has been verified on their site to be authentic. Uh, you have to go through Crower or Crowder LLC or something like that. They have them. They're uh, genuine. That's also a rev limiter piece. That's a Type 60 uh, horn button. I'll show you the badge on the back of the car. It's the uh, same model as this. And then the custom gauge set that I just ordered. This is the Jeffster edition. The car's name is Jeff. Uh, it's named after a little skip by Bill Cosby about a bratty kid on an airplane. I thought it was funny. Um, you can see the vitals gauge there. I know that G is supposed to be lowercase for millimeters of mercury. Please don't bite my head off. Uh, the speedometer gauge has my little inscription there from my speed shop. That's the Hiroshima City flag along with Fachi Speed Shop in it. That's the standard uh, Warbird tech, or Warbird speedometer. Uh, again, high quality H2O. That's the uh, temperature gauge. The FUDS gauge. I don't know if I can get the camera to see that. There it is. Uh, little FUDS gauge there with the, uh, oh shit, <laughs> we're out of gas. And then the tachometer. Now I love the Ferrari style uh, gauges that Adam makes with the yellow tack. And I saw one that also had a red tack, so I thought, hey, blue car, blue tack. That'd be kind of nice. Uh, at night, this one lights up behind it all white. The rest of them, the scales actually light up blue. Uh, so it looks really, really nice at night. You get a little uh, light peeking out between the, uh, the needles there. They also have a six o'clock hold, so it just looks fantastic at nighttime. I love it. Um, I'll show you the uh, badge on the back here also a type 60 there you go that's his type 60 badge as well you can get that in black or blue this one's blue I thought it'd be a really nice touch to have that just on the back and then have the one in the uh, steering wheel match it so I think that looks pretty nice um, again 
it basically took every single one of these pieces to uh, do this interior. So right now I'm more, I emailed Blackbird Fabworks about getting one of their GT3 roll bars, possibly in like a chrome effects or a silver to match the wheels. I'm gonna go right about there. Throw a Project G bikini top on that and we should be good for the summer. And a nice little piece that I found here on eBay over the winter. The uh, original owner's manual. This one has a different VIN in it, but uh, the old owner probably threw it in the trash or lost it or something. So I got another one. It's got some stains on it, but yeah, it has a nice patina and it was a lot cheaper than $200 like some of them are. I think I got the whole kit for 35 so it's got every little book and brochure. It has the thing for the original spare, the Dunlop tires, everything. So I thought that'd be nice to have uh, in the glove box. But yeah, guys, uh, I've been doing a lot of work on this car, as you can tell. And uh, I'm ready to have it back on the street. There's a 949 Racing uh, end link up front. Got the nice uh, new engine under tray that the car never had when I bought it. I should be getting a set of these in clear with some uh, yellow bulbs behind them. Project G sells that. They sell a couple other things that I'm going to get when I get the bikini top. But for right now, I'm waiting to get the uh, the roll bar so that I can take the measurement for the bikini top and then we can get that ordered. But yeah, guys. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for watching and hopefully I can keep you updated more than uh, once every three months or so. You can follow me on Instagram, uh, FastFachi, F-A-S-T-F-A-C-H-I. I'm on Instagram. I'm also on uh, Miata.net as Della Ranger, D-E-L-A-R-A-N-G-E-R, -E -E 95 with an apostrophe. If you go under the build section, you'll see the uh, 1990 restoration on the college budget. That's my build thread. It's about seven pages at this point. Um, that goes over everything in detail in case you're wanting to look up any of these parts or ask me some more questions or anything like that. But I think this little guy's come a long way. And I've got some more uh, tricks up my sleeve. Possibly a road truck supercharger, but don't tell my girlfriend, please. That'll be coming this summer. So either turbo or supercharged by about June or July. So thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.